do you see, first do you see other barriers that were not mentioned maybe? And uh, uh, why aren't we going beyond these barriers do you think today? Um, thank you. Uh, I want to also just take a few seconds to thank Odd and the Forum for, for uh, pushing and, and uh, bringing us all together here. It's been a very, very fruitful day and a half for me and it's a vision that Odd has had for many years, which is terrific to see um, brought to such a uh, degree of success. I have a lot of goals about this evening. Um, I wrote my first article in uh, 1979 about transgender. And uh, I've thought a lot about barriers and breakthroughs. And um, I think I think the reason, you know, the technology is good. And uh, someone made a point this morning to uh, follow us about the animals in the market. The reason we're stuck in my opinion is the following, very overly simplified, but I would say it. Women are on the wrong side of the equation right now. We're too involved in the advocacy side and we're not involved enough on the two fronts that matter the most at the moment. One is finance, one is technology. And when they move across, these issues will move. And those of you who are young in the room and are choosing your careers and are thinking about where to put your time, this display has been in the oven 25 years too long. It's, 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 it's got to come out. Advocacy is great, it's very important. We have to institutionalize the ignition of individual behavior, it's insufficient. We need women in finance, in politics, in technology. And at the highest possible decision making level. And that's one way back. A more main obstacle, let's say, is there is no price on pollution. I salute the European Union for taking the, the, the initiative to instigate and sign the Kyoto Protocol to operate the European Emissions uh, Trading Scheme, which has put a so-called price on carbon. We labored for years in the United States to do the same in Chicago Climate Exchange. We actually had the price, a forward price, of, of one ton of greenhouse gas emissions at $13 a ton, which would have meant that it would cost $13 more a ton to emit, therefore making the cost of renewable more desirable. And $13 a ton in the United States was significant. Today, the price of forward in the European Union is 14 euros a ton. So there's not that big a differential. We failed in the United States, as you heard this morning, to pass the bill. But we need some kind of end of the story. There has to be a price at the end of the year for doing the wrong kind of, of uh, for making the wrong choices. And if there was that price, it would be seen in the, it would become visible. It would be an x-ray machine that you could see in the boardroom. And then the board of uh, directors would say, hey, there really is a cost here. And this would flow back into the renewable energy businesses as incentives to avoid that cost. And the third thing I think is this. So women have to be more involved in finance and technology and politics. That individual behavioral choices are insufficient and not enough. They're just ignition, but the choice changes have to be institutionalized in those three sectors and really made to happen. Price on carbon has to happen. And then we have to understand that to be green is a little bit like beauty these days. It's in the eye of the beholder. And sustainability the same. And as John uh, Louis just said, we need closed loops. We need a story that ends, a beginning, middle, and an end. You can be very green and still have your emissions going sky high. And so we really need to understand that there, we have to change. We will have to reduce our emissions. We can't have everything. And so those are what I consider the lexicon needs to change as well. We can't just be satisfied with being green. We have to set a target and say, okay, I'm going to be green in the following way. It's just like going on a diet. It's not that easy. Sounds like, uh, you know, uh, you can put it off till tomorrow, but you know it's going to be good for you. But at some point, the doctor's going to take your blood pressure. And we need to take our blood pressure every day. Are we really changing? Are we really changing? what we do, or are we kind of changing it when it's convenient? And to be green is becoming a little bit one of those things that's fashionable and convenient, and we've got to move it back to the dial where it's a little more concrete. Okay, I'd like to come back on your first uh, point, of course, is we're in the women's forum, about having more women in where decisions are made, eventually, like finance, technology, politics. Um, in a way, what you would like is to, in 25 years from now, to see the conversation we had with Jesse and some of them, but Jesse being now the CEO of Renault Nissan and a young man, uh, environmental activist. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to challenge still, uh, even though I agree with you, which is a supposition, but I, I, I'd like to challenge this point. What, what makes you, because I hear that very often from my clients or people are, from the executives I have in touch with, what makes you think women would make or actually make different decisions? Okay, that's a good question. It's good to be challenged, but let me answer it two ways. One, first of all, we know the obstacles are there in finance and technology. Everybody is saying it, and women are not there. So their absence suggests to me that there's a uh, potential yeah. that's missing. And secondly, if you look where, where let's just take two, two very um, uh, issues, uh, you know, soft issues, let's call them, diversity and human resources. And it's just a, a environment, health, and safety. These, these are what I call soft, lean, soft kind of issues. When women, when, when companies put women in charge of those, they explode it. Most of the vice presidents for environment, health, and safety in the United States anyway, and I think in Europe as well, are women. So these have become very dynamic departments. They're just not on the right side of the balance sheet. They're still a little bit absent from the uh, boardroom and the CFO. Same with diversity efforts. Look how successful it is. Look how public it is. Look how many presentations, conferences, how visible it is. Why? Because women have become the leaders of that. So if we got women to be the leaders of analyzing, as, as someone said this morning, poor Carlos, he's trying to get 10% and say he's bullish, and the Wall Street <laughs> analysts are, are telling him he's, he's optimistic and, and, and inflated, well, if women were in the analyst role and really talking to him and doing it the way they would do it, they wouldn't call it bullish. So, you know, I think those are some examples of proof. Okay. Uh, maybe we, before we move to questions from the audience, maybe I'd like to ask the three of you uh, um, a key question uh, to me about the green economy is that it must be inclusive, otherwise it will fail. And I have a question which is about what can we do to expand the green economy to southern countries to be sure that we succeed in expanding the green economy to southern countries? And then maybe you can hold the yeah, I think it's a very important mm -hmm. question, basically I think we have to empower the people. It means not only give them, help them to find the right product, and sometimes we'll have to design the product with them, say, I'm thinking for, for example about simple cook stores with women, for women you know, in the developing world. We have also to train them, you know, I've attended some um, courses in Bangladesh where the women couldn't read, they couldn't write, but you could explain them to design, okay, this is the battery of your PV panel, and then you see the bottom is getting red or it's getting green, and you would have to do that and get your TV off and whatever. So you, you can train them. And you can, also, of course, empower them, you know, fixing the things, becoming the technician of the village. And then, you know, instead of being the woman that is earning no money, and uh, she becomes, you know, the focal point, everybody's coming to her, and that's, that's going to change her life.